Thanks for tuning in. Today we're going to be reviewing the IGP Sport IGS320 cycling computer. Whether you're a professional cyclist or just buy your first bike, cycling computers are an essential accessory everyone should own. You don't have to spend a fortune to buy one though, as there are a lot of mainstream companies that offer sub hundred dollar GPS computers. Today we're going to be looking at one of those, the IGP Sport IGS320 cycling computer we have here. It's IGP Sport's latest computer and has a minimalist design and affordable price point. They also offer a full set of accessories from mounts to sensors that you can also buy separately. In this review, we're just going to focus on the computer itself. You can see a very simple packaging, bright white and orange graphics with this nice little uh, reflective, almost shiny finish on the sides. Specs are written in the back in multiple languages and then very simple descriptions on the other sides. We'll go ahead and take it out of the box and go over the specs. Retail price on this is $79.90 without any of the sensors. Those are all available separately. It is a 2.4 inch LCD display with a automatic backlight depending on your time zone. You can see internal packaging is very simple. You just pop this open. It has turn by turn navigation, which is something you don't really see at this price point. And it just tells you left and right as well as distance. It has 72 hour runtime, which is pretty impressive with a 1000 milliamp battery directly built in and it has USB type C charging, uh, which is really nice to see it's something a lot of newer items are using and means you can share your charging cable with your other devices. It has a Garmin style mount as well. So another nice price point, nice feature for this price point. So you can use this with any mount already on the market. In terms of what comes with it, not too much. You just have the basic packaging an instruction manual on how to set it up in multiple languages. Then you have a little bag of accessories with the handlebar mount. So really standard design. This is the O-ring style with the uh, little indentations. So you can see you have four hooks, a little rubber grommet behind it. And then you just wrap this around your stem or handlebar to put it on your bike. You get the charging cable, which is USB type C. And again, really nice to see here. You can share your cables with other devices and that's about it. Now let's take a look at the weight of the computer. So the computer by itself comes in at 66 grams. Now let's go over the fit and finish of the IGS320. Very standard rectangular design for a GPS computer. You have branding right on the front face with the IGP Sport printed on there. On the bottom, you have the Garmin quarter turn style mount. So very common mount, works on everything. So really nice to have here. It's also great to see the USB type C charging port. And with the 72 hour runtime, you can see it's a little bit thicker than other computers uh, to conceal that extra thousand milliamp battery. They have this little glossy ring here as well, which adds a little bit of contrast, especially from the side angles. Otherwise, really simple two buttons on the bottom with the lanyard connection here, which you don't really need, especially for such a smaller computer. You only need that for really the heavy ones to make sure it doesn't go flying off, but still something you can attach. The screen itself is a standard LCD display. So everything's pre-arranged. You don't have any uh, overlays. Everything's kind of pre-assigned. So it's pretty impressive what they can do with it. And you can see a very simple interface. You have multi-grid display. You have a configuration menu, which really reuses whatever it can. And then two buttons to use it. You can see really loud beep that you can turn off with the app and essentially a three page display. So you can see your speed, then you can see your average speed with different data on the bottom and then maximum with different data there as well. It has an automatic bike uh, backlight. So it depends on the uh, local time zone. So based on sunrise and sunset, and it automatically turns on when you interact with it for a few seconds. Pretty easy to read display too with the white on black. Two buttons have nice feel to them. You have a power button and then a, essentially a menu button that will cycle through and then hold it to enter the configuration menu. Now let's go over the setup of the 320 GPS. It's a pretty simple computer being a lower end model. So there's not a lot of customization. Press the bottom left button to turn it on. And then you can see it's pretty much it. There's no real setup you have to do. There are some configuration options, no touchscreen, obviously. So you have to use the two button interface. 
to enter the configuration option, you hold the bottom right. And this is kind of the downside of any GPS computer, uh, sub $100 one. They have this grid display, so you can see it doesn't really have a label. It just has a kind of text display there that doesn't actually seem to be spelled correctly. This should be pair, and that'll pair your computer with the smartphone. And you only need to do this once to set up the connection. After that, you don't need to do this. So we'll skip that for now. Hold the button again to enter it. Then you can enter E2. Not really obvious what this does, but it is the time zone setting. So you pick your time zone relative to GMT, left button to switch fields, right button to switch, change the value, hold it down to save and exit. So there's no save. You really have to save and exit, which is really annoying, especially when you do multiple things at the same time. Re-enter it. We have E3. This is where you can connect your cadence sensor, your speed sensor, your heart rate monitor, or the combo speed cadence. So I'm gonna select it. I only have a cadence sensor. And you can see it found it pretty quickly. Now we'll go back to the configuration menu. So that was E3, E4. Again, not really obvious what it is, but this is actually the circumference of your wheel. So if you have a speed sensor, you're gonna to wanna to set the correct circumference and you can look it up based on your tire and uh, wheel or just uh, measured really easily by just putting a mark on the ground and then doing one full rotation. And then you have the unit display. So you pick it with the left button and then change it with the right one. So kilometers or miles per hour and that actually changes the temperature units too. So if you're happy with it, again, you have to hold to save and exit. And that's it. So E1, E2, 3, 4, 5, and then it just goes back. To exit the menu, just hold it or wait for it to time out. Now the main screen, very simple. You have a lot of data display here. Speed is more prominently displayed here. Status icons, temperature, battery status, your uh, satellite connection. You have a navigation field, which is not, nothing more than a turn by turn direction. So you don't get street names, you just get distance to turn, which is somewhat useful, but obviously very confusing if you get lost. Gradient, time, uh, speed here. If you have sensors connected, it will show here. Otherwise, it'll just show time. You have a timer, which is your ride time, and then distance. You pretty much have three page options. If you press it again, you see that rectangle moves. In the second page, you have the average, and then you have the altitude, and then the ascent shown on the bottom. Press it again, you get the maximum. So that'll show you the maximum, and then switch the bottom two fields to odometer and calories burned. So pretty simple to set up. Obviously no real customization. You can't adjust the fields. You can do some basic things like auto pause, auto stop with the app, but otherwise really simple to set up and get going. And if you're just looking for a cheap GPS computer, something like this is a good option. Now let's take a look at the IGS320 on the road. As you can see, it has a nice high contrast screen that's visible both in high brightness or even darker areas. You can see the multi-row layout is also very easy to use. The speed is most prominent, and then you have the other data displays above and below it. It's pretty easy to navigate, even though there's not much customization. It gives you all the sensor data right there in the second and bottom row. The navigation here is really confusing though. You can see that in the top left corner, we've uploaded a route, and all you really get is the turns. And as soon as you make a mistake, it won't reroute you, and it gets a little bit confused until it finally goes into the off-route mode and you're forced to either re-upload it or bring out your cell phone to figure out where you were. So not a very useful feature. Everything else though is very easy to use and you have the speed display, greater or less than the average, you have gradient and all the important factors right on there. Here you can see what it looks like when you're off route. The navigation sort of gives up and you have to remember to always upload the navigation when you have the GPS computer on, unlike a Brighton computer or higher end ones, which you can just select one from the menu here it's limited to one, and it's the only one that you've uploaded before you started riding. So now let's take a look at the iGPS Sport app. As with a lot of GPS computers, there's an app, companion app, that lets you do a lot of the syncing, as well as some other features. With the iGS320, it's a fairly basic computer, but you can see a very simple app, four tabs on the bottom. You can look at your activity, and you mainly use the app for uploading the data so you can see these are all my recent routes that I've recorded with the device. 
and you can sync that to Strava or other devices. So you can do that with the link feature, and that's something we've seen with most other computers. Otherwise, on device, once you sync it up, this is basically what you see. So you can see your routes. Uh, you can actually create navigational routes. And here's one I've made before. Pretty simple. Uh, it's not a very easy one to use though. And basically activated, you press send, get that annoying beep, and then you're ready to ride essentially. So you need to do this before you start riding. It doesn't save it on the device. You can create a new route. And this is pretty frustrating to use. So you have a little dot at the center of your view. Click on it, confirm, add a waypoint, and you kind of do that till you're done. Highly recommend just uploading one or using it for one of your pre-recorded rides. But as you saw with the navigation, it's very simple. So you don't actually get a map view when you're riding and you don't get any rerouting either. And you can see the default name is line test. And then again, translation issues like delete line, which doesn't really make sense. It should say delete route. <clears throat> Otherwise, really simple. You can do notifications on the phone. You can do the live tracking. It's kind of a feature we saw with Brighton recently as well. So you can send a link to uh, set people on your list. And then once you press record, it will send that link. So pretty convenient. You can see your connected sensors on here. Alert settings, so you can do time, distance, calories. Uh, not really useful, I'm not sure why people would use this, unless you want to watch your heart rate or you have a time commitment. And then you have auto configuration, so really simple. Again, there's not a lot of customization here. You can't move data fields around. Uh, you really can't do much. Only thing you can do is change the auto pause. Uh, you can change the automatic page turn if you wanted it to automatically go to home page. And then some more minor stuff. You can turn off the beep, which is kind of nice. So that'll actually turn off the annoying ketone. So if you press it off, that'll make that quiet. And then firmware update and then units of measure. So very simple, unlike higher end computers where you can change a display, add bike profiles or other things. With this one, you're pretty much limited to uploading a route, which again, really kind of hard to use, especially without a map, or basically units and the connected sensors. Now let's do a quick comparison between the IGS320, some other computers on the market in the sub $100 price point. You have quite a few options. You have Psych Plus, Brian, Kuspu, Shannon, which are just a few we've actually reviewed. The Psych Plus M2 is kind of distinctive with the round profile, very similar feature set, limited customization, and that same LCD display. Uh, the screen is a little bit dimmer. You can see that on camera with the black on white versus the white on black. So it's a little bit easier to read. And you can connect a power meter to the Psych Plus, which you can't do with the IGS-220. Otherwise, same thing, same Garmin mount, USB uh, Type-C charging and automatic. This one's a manual backlight versus the automatic one based on your time zone. Brian also has a $70 a Rider 50 Neo, a little more compact. Uh, I like the Brian support a little bit better. They have a nice app that's a little more intuitive to use. Similar feature sets though, again, two row display versus the three row because of the smaller screen. So you can't fit quite as much data on here, but you can cycle through the bottom ones basic configuration and quick sensor connectivity. If you're looking for something cheap, just to look at your speed, altitude, distance, then something like the Kuspu is a good option. This is a $30 computer. You can see a very similar form factor, uh, almost identical really in size. This is a BC26. And you can see Garmin mount, USB rechargeable. The difference here with the Kuspu is you can't connect any sensor. So you're really limited to just distance, time, altitude. So if that's all you're looking for, then uh, this is a good option. But you can see otherwise very similar, just bigger display because of uh, the way the screen's laid out. Shanron Miles is an interesting option. If you have a power meter, this will connect to that or actually give you an estimated power, which is a nice training tool. So you can kind of measure your progress independent of just altitude and really kind of gauge your performance. Otherwise really similar, three pages, different beeps. The IGS is a little bit more annoying. Uh, Shanron again does connect a power meter and does have that little LED indicator that will sync with a RAS Pro and kind of mirror the taillight mode, which is an interesting feature. 
The big difference with the IGS, I think, versus the other sub hundred dollar ones is the fact that it does have turn by turn navigation, but because there's no street names, no map view, it's not particularly useful. So if you compare this to a higher end computer like the uh, Brian S500, which actually has uh, full on maps and routes, you can see this is much more useful. Uh, touch screen, color touch screen, you can do courses, so I can pick a route, actually look through it. So that's something you can't really do with the IGF320. You just get turn by turn with uh, no directions, just the left, right, and the distance. So easy to get lost. And the fact that it has no re-navigation, no rerouting, uh, makes it a lot less usable than something like the Brain, which will actually help you get back on track. Now let's go over the pros and cons for the GPS computer. What we like about it is that it has a high contrast screen. Even though it's a simple display, it's very easy to read. And the multi-row data layout is very well organized, so even though you only have three pages, it's really easy to find what you're looking for. We also appreciate the long-lasting battery life that has a USB-C charging, so it's not a computer you really need to charge that often. Some of the cons for it, you have this obnoxious beep. You can turn it off via the app, but it's a little bit louder than other GPS computers. The navigation is also very difficult to use without a map. We found it pretty much useless just because it shows you left and right, and as soon as you make a mistake, there is no rerouting, so it's very hard to get back on track. Also, it lacks data field customization options, which you do see some of at this price range. Taking everything into account would give the IGS320 an 8.4 out of 10. It's a very simple and high contrast display GPS computer. Thanks for watching this review. Don't forget to like and subscribe. You can see more content from us on our website at thesweetcyclist.com. As well as follow us on Instagram at thesweetcyclist. This is The Sweet Cyclist reminding you to enjoy the ride.